Hey guys, so I just uh, got a delivery. I ordered some aluminum blocks. So I'm, I'm finishing up the Ed gun. I just started that video last night and I'm gonna be finishing that up today with the STX barrel that I made for it. Um, but I had to take the shroud off and I have to, I'll, I'll show you in the next video. But so right now I'm making uh, a mold for casting the slugs. So I'm going to be machining it and I'm gonna show you the tools that you need and how to do it because I'm gonna make it, it's just gonna be a straight piece like uh, the ones that, you, that would come with the, um, the ones that would come with the press lug that I bought if I had gotten those. Um, but I ended up buying the, the um, you know, the pre-made ones like this off of online, but I'd like to make them a certain depth for a certain weight. So I'm taking these measurements. This is three quarter inch, which this is three quarter inch. So I'm just going to cut it the other way. So that one piece should do both sides of one mold. After I machine a good amount off, I'm going to just finish this cut. Hi, Duke. Hi, good boy. This is my dog. Say hi, Duke. Say hi, Duke. Hi, come up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up, good boy. Come here. Good boy. Say hi to everybody, Dookie. Say hi, guys. I'm Duke. Hi, guys. Hey, guys. It's the Duke. Hi, good boy. You my good boy? Good boy. You good boy, Duke. So I'm going to machine the end of this smooth. I was raising my voice here. Duke, no, no, no. You leave that. Leave it. Leave it. Um, I was raising my voice yesterday doing that video because... I had the directional mic on the camera, but I got I got my body mic on today, so I usually use this, so I got in the habit of like talking to you guys on the video while I'm moving around, but yesterday I, I was fooling myself when I was doing ag accuracy on, on the egg gun. It was going all over the place, but I figured out why, so I'll show you guys in that video, but this video is about making the mold, so the next cut... I needed this piece to be pre-cut because I have to cut through it in the middle, the, the, tall, the tall side, and I need another piece of this exact diameter to stabilize the brace. All right, so I'll machine that because I want it to be perfectly smooth. This thing has been cutting pretty straight though. I'm very surprised. It doesn't usually cut that straight. Um, so let's just check our measurements. And definitely use, at the very least, a caliper. You don't really need a micrometer. I mean, you definitely could use one, but you don't really need to. Yeah, so this is the three quarters right here. It's, you know, 0.75 right on. And that's, that. these are, these are actually slightly bigger. 0.7, no, it's right there, almost 0.76, but it's barely. But it's machined nicely, so all I have to machine is the end I just cut and the other end that I'm going to cut. So this is going to be boom, boom, and then I have to take the channels out like this right here on this side where that channel is that the scissors go into because I'm going to switch the scissors over to them. Uh, I'm going to make two or three of these for different calibers and different weights, maybe four. I have enough to make four, four and have some left over. So <clears throat> I'll just melt it into my blocks that I've been making. That's a block that I made of aluminum from, from aluminum chips. It's, I only surfaced one end, but it's not big enough to bother doing the rest. I decided to melt it again with good aluminum when I have enough scrap and make a good piece. So what I'm going to do is, oh, I'm going to take the other measurement, zero this out. All right, so we're going to go right here on the side with the channel is 1.13, but so 1.13.
Hey guys, um, so I came back to uh, to start finishing this up. Um, I actually am on the second one, so this is gonna be this is gonna be one here. I just I haven't gotten as far on this one. That one is almost done. It's I just have to do the last couple of holes. I just have, have to ream them out, put the, uh, the the slicer back on the top, and then this one I just have to vise down and I have to do. Um, one more pin. They have these two pins to align them. Like it comes through here and then there's a small hole in here. I have to do one on the inside one. That, that one's already done with the pins and everything. Um, so it's, I'm just put, bringing you back now so I can show you I'm making the last couple holes. Uh, I have two more left. So now I'm looking at the digital readout and the way I know it's the same depth is because I go down the exact same amount in the digital readout because I, I had it like uh, a little not a little too shallow. I wanted it a little deeper. So I'm going back through each one just a little bit deeper and make sure they're all the same on the DRO and then I can be sure I have the same size these are these are not going to be like the shape of a bullet. They're just going to be uh, straight down, and um, they're going to be just straight down, and then they're going to be uh, you know just ready for the press. It's not actually a shoot like this, obviously. So I don't I haven't watched the replay to see what po point my voice cut out at, but I know it cut out because I saw my microphone was dead. Um, and I haven't been following my own rule to, to um, change the batteries every time whether they need it or not. All right, so Duke, leave it, leave it. Okay. All right, so this is just about squared away. You good boy. All right. So it looks pretty good, right? And then the holes are going to be they're going to be like that. The the uh, the black stuff is just stuff you spray on it. So oh, sorry, you guys can't see that. So and it'll just meet like that. And those the black stuff is so that the lead doesn't stick. It's to keep the lead from sticking. What's the matter? You come up, come on up, come, Duke, come up. I say hi, Duke. Come here. Say hi, everybody. Say hi, guys. I'm Duke, the Basenji. I'm Chris's right hand. Huh? Huh? You my right hand? You my right hand, good boy? Yeah. Daddy loves you. He's got his little bed in my workshop and everything. He's got it made. See? There's Duke's little bed. Come here, buddy. There you go, good boy. There you go, good boy. There you go, good boy. Come here, come lay down. Lay down, it's okay. You wanna lay down? You wanna lay down? Dookie, you wanna lay down? Or you wanna hang with daddy? Oh, good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. You good boy. It's okay, you good boy. Dookie, you good boy. I just went to see the movie with my fiance last night, Strays, and it's so funny how they like spin around before they have, they lay down, and they're like, oh, you know, they get, and they're talking, and it, I, I, it's not really the type of movie I would go to see, but my fiance would, and I took her, and I, I actually, and I actually liked it. It was kind of fun. I don't know why I wouldn't go to see it. It's just not something I normally would go to see, but I do. I would with her, and then I actually had a good time, and it was a funny movie. And then this is the plate that'll slice off the extra lead, which actually needs to be a little tighter. Uh, yeah, that should do it. All right, and then this is the stop that it goes into. So all you gotta do is thread these holes. You just drill the hole and then thread it, and then you can make um, 
Oh shit, this thing is not looking at me. Sorry about that. So, what I was saying is, let's lift that up, lift that up, and put that up like that, and I'll bring you over here. Um, what I was saying is that these, these, uh, these holes, well, this one, this is for the, uh, this is just a screw that's gonna stop this. This is gonna slide right into it. I'll show you, let me just finish tightening it. And then the other one was just to hold this top piece on. And then, uh, so you just tighten that down nice and snug. And then you can put a little set screw in it if you want. I did, you don't have to, but you can put like a little, um, one, it's like a like a set screw on the uh, on the air guns, like a one and a half millimeter. Uh, right there. So I put the set screws in to tighten, you know, to lock the screws from coming up. It's, I mean, it's fairly easy. All you have to do is make a hole. And if you have even a drill press or, or a uh, milling table, or if you have a CNC machine, you can just, uh, you just drill a small hole like that, just, just a little bit smaller than you, the screw you want to use. And then you get like a grub screw kit like this, and it has all the, these you can get at Harbor Freight for like a, a few dollars. Really, at Harbor Freight, they're like a few bucks. I mean, there's a lot of stuff there that's junk, but there's a lot of stuff there that you need and that comes in handy. So, you know, you get little little set screws like that. You get, it's a whole kit of all grub screws. So sometimes these will fit and replace another grub screw if it strips or something. But most of the time when that happens, like on my crown, I don't use grub screws. I, I uh, replace them with, with regular um, five millimeter head you know, like bolts that I that I cut as short as I could. So I was going to use this. I was going to use the Go No Go, but I ended up not using it because 22 caliber. I don't have any bit that's exactly the size I wanted to go. They're all uh, quite a bit smaller, like significantly smaller. So these, I could actually go quite a bit deeper in there. I could go. I probably should have gone deeper. Uh, maybe I will drill it back out again. Not right now, though. I mean, I could go, I don't want to go too wide of a diameter because I want to still be able to use this one for 22. And then the other one I made is going to be for 25 when I finish it. I'm going to finish it up as a 25. So that's why I'm making two. This, this actually was a 22 anyway. And then I have another, the other block that I have is for a 20, it's for a 25. Uh, or I'm sorry, it's for a big 22 that I make 25s out of also. So I use it for both. But anyways, I just wanted you guys to at least see the last part when I'm finishing up the last holes and, uh, you know, and the finished product. And you know what? Let me plug this thing in and I'll make some, I'll make some slugs out of it. And then the other one, it just, it doesn't have too much. Oh, and this, the spot where I got stuck on the other one where I, it didn't, this one came out nice and straight because I, I made sure that the vise was down, down tight. But this one where it didn't come out nice and straight, you, you see these marks right now where I welded. <clears throat> so I just, I ended up uh, tack welding it, fusion welding it with a TIG welder. Um, I just, uh, I just need to smooth that part out again, but I'm going to resurface it, clamp, that's what I did with that one too. <clears throat> I'm going to clamp these together while it's in the scissors, and then I'm going to surface this again, smooth, so that they're completely even with each other. And with, once I have the second pin in, that, that'll be simple. And I had a lot more, I left a lot more meat on the other one, because I didn't have to step that in like this. You know, this one, I was, it was like, sh it shifted. But the vice is not moving again now. The thing's down hard. But from time to time, you got to check it because all the all the jerking and every and vibrations and everything, the th the threads can wear themselves loose. Either that, or maybe I got to start using thread locker. But anyways, um, you see, I fusion welded those uh, a couple pieces of those welding coupons, like to practice to practice TIG welding on these little things. That I was trying to show my buddy how to how to weld aluminum. He ended up picking it up pretty decent for his first time. I mean, that was his first TIG welding. I don't think he got any additive material in there. I think it was just all fusion welded. But this, this end, he was like burning right through. 
but he ended up he ended up getting the hang of it and he he braises air conditioning a lot too so i know he knows he's got the concept like it, it shouldn't be that hard for him to learn and it wasn't he, if you can start the tig weld in one night that's pretty impressive all right so that's going to take a little while to heat up but i will show you guys some some slugs um, I'm going to be st picking up the next video. These are the extra screws for that one. Uh, I'm going to be picking up the next video. Uh, shortly, I'm going to be finishing up the egg gun. I'm going to try to get that wrapped up before I, I get swamped with work. Um, because I, I want to decide if I'm going to put the, keep that STX barrel on it or not. Um, I'm going to go back to that shortly. And then I'll wrap these two videos up and put these up tonight. Um, because I'm kind of pissed off I lost the first three videos of the uh, of the Ed Gun thing, making the barrel, but last night I made a pretty long video and I'm figuring some stuff out that I had to figure out anyways. So hopefully uh, that'll be good, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this. You can make your own mold. If you don't have the scissors like this, these these just came from Amazon. Uh, they're they're uh, Lee, Pre Lee Precision from uh, same same guy that makes the molds, Lee Precision. Um, and uh, that's it. You, you just get the get the uh, scissors. You, you get them separately anyways. If you were to order one of these molds, I think the molds are like 60 or 80 bucks and the uh, this the scissors are like another 30 separate. So you could make your own mold and then, you know, because you don't really need to make them into a bullet if you're pressing them. So that's why the ones that they sell with the press slug is kind of it's kind of an outrageous price for them. They're like 400 and something dollars. It's crazy. And then you can get actual bullet casting molds for 60 bucks or, or maybe 80 bucks. I don't I, I don't remember exactly the price, but it was in that ballpark, 60 or 80 dollars. So if it's 60, 80 bucks, how are they charging 400 and change for something that's not? I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I love them over there. They're awesome. But like, uh, it's just a rip off price. I, I'm sorry. It just is. Uh, anyways, um, I got to call it how I see it. I mean, I, I just, I don't pull any punches. I'm not going to bullshit you guys. Well, I don't care if they're my sponsor, if they're my friend, if they, you know, I call my friends out myself and I would expect them to do the same with me. And that's just how I am. So I'm not going to pull any bullshit with you guys. That's for sure. Never. Um, anyways, so I'm going to, I'm going to stop it there because I'm not going to finish this one tonight. I'm not really too concerned about it. What I will do is I'll probably add another clip once this heats up because I don't want to keep you guys hanging around just watching me do whatever I'm doing. It's, it's, I'm sure I'm not that interesting, but, uh, I will, um, I'll pick the video back up once this lead heats up and I can make some, make some, uh, casts and, uh, I'll show you guys how they come out. And then these are going to be, these are going to be, uh, this will be ready tomorrow. So maybe I'll do the, ed I'll finish the Edgun video tonight and I'll just take a clip of this and I'll finish it tomorrow and put that up tomorrow. But yeah, once I get the other pin in here, this is going to line up nice because this inside part lines up first. That's why I wanted to just get the outside part where it was squared up like that. And then the inside one will line it up like as soon as they start coming together, that one will, will start sliding in. I got to put that wide angle lens on here. I'm going to do that. Um, I can make the angle wider. This is one of those the little GoPro 11s. I was using that DSLR camera for so long and I'm so familiar with that compared to this. Um, but as it turns out, the video quality is pretty damn good and the angle's pretty wide, but I can't like zoom in and out like I used to on that one. It's a lot different, but the video quality is good and you get a pretty wide angle pretty good field of view it's just getting in close I gotta actually bring you in close but that's easy to do it's a tiny camera I actually got a headband to put it right on my head I'll do that one of these videos but I'm not gonna wear put a, wear a microphone on top of it because um, I have to have this thing on top when I have the mic on me hold on I'll show you this is the receiver 
the wireless receiver that's actually it's plugged in right now so this thing goes plugged into you know the thing that goes to the GoPro the the little uh, wire thing it goes from a USB-C to another USB-C and then a three and a half millimeter which is what this goes to and then it takes rechargeable batteries you can just recharge those and then so that's why I got to switch them out every time I use it because they keep dying when I and I don't know that they're dead because they don't say anything um, but the uh, and then it, I have it on a another like a uh, like another battery bank or whatever another power bank so that the battery inside this doesn't die and I have a couple batteries for it but that's only when I need to take it outside anyways but I will be doing some cool shit with it when I when I fix my challenger which I'm gonna make another video doing that and I'm gonna get that clutch video put together and I put that up I changed the clutch and the rear axles and then now I broke the drive shaft and the differential which I knew was gonna happen I just didn't think it was gonna happen so fast uh, so I have to. I, I ordered a new drive shaft and a new differential, 390 gears, uh, four-inch aluminum drive shaft, and the all the all the heavy shit to, to hold them together. So um, I don't think I'm going to be blowing that, blowing anything else on that car because now I've done the whole front end, the whole rear end. Anyways, I'll talk about the cars in the car videos. I'm getting carried away, so I'm going to end this video here unless this is warm enough. No, it's not. But I'm going to help it out. I've got probably like 15 pounds of lead in there. So this is something that you can't do on a 3D printer. You can't make these kind of parts on a 3D printer. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna use this. This is the original one. I'm oh, sorry, guys. See, that's the thing. I mean, I, this I forget because this camera is so small and uh, whatever. Um, this, I think I'm gonna reuse this. I think I'm gonna just machine this down, nice and smooth and get rid of this burr because you see, see this this is part of why I, I was making a new 25 this worked well for a 25 it's actually a 22 but it's deep enough and i could even make it make the holes wider and deeper and then resurface the top so that i don't get that because these were all sticking together like where those where those dents are from me banging slugs out of it they were all it was making you know those spaces were open enough to fill it with lead and then i was getting like all these lines in between each slug so i had to like cut them all apart afterwards it's a pain in the ass so i figured i would just make new ones but i could resurface this with the machine and make it perfectly smooth like make it like brand new and then i don't have to do the pins on this one yeah i may as well do that for one more I mean, I can only use one at a time anyways, but I can do multiple calibers. Which, with the press, you don't need... It depends on the weight. In the, in the 30 caliber, you know, you can use 20... You can even use 22s, but they got to be big. Unless you're making small 30s and big 25s. But, or, you know, 22s. I make 22s, usually I cut... When I cut the wire, the wire is like 45 grain. Uh, because I usually do 40, 41 and a half, 42, um, but the 42 grains won't fit in any magazines on any of the guns, except the Panthera. The Panthera, I don't have it in 22, but it, I use 48 grain or 52 grain in 25, which is, I don't think you're going to find anybody selling them that big. Um, I do, if you guys want any, I'm, I'll, I'm happy to sell you guys some. I, I actually have been considering... You know, I, I've, I act obviously like the air gun industry and I, I like, you know, testing with stuff and building stuff and all that. So I, I think I might have mentioned already, I, I was thinking about starting to make ammunition, like getting all the equipment and making it on a bigger scale. But I think I would have to test it first, maybe get a, another one or two more presses and hire a couple people after I've, well, no, I wouldn't even, yeah, I would just get the press. I would buy a couple more presses and make the molds myself because I don't want anybody else's design. I want to make my own. So 
Um, and then I would have to perfect that and and do some research because I'm not going to sell it if it's not 100% right. I mean, I'll sell them what I have now that I'm pressing, but I'm not claim like putting a name on them or anything like that. I just press them in, in a mold that I bought, which I did modify, but not it's still not mine. I would make one from not from scratch. So, anyways, um, yeah, this is definitely not hot enough. Oh, it's getting warm. Uh, I'll probably edit a little bit of this out at least to save you guys the misery, the misery of having to watch me blabber on for all this time, but I'm trying to kill time until this thing heats up so I can show you. Um, so, you know what? I'll tell you what. We'll throw the half inch bit in there and machine this down. Let's, let's do that. So, this is one that I, that, the one that I was telling you that I've been using for 25s. And this is either a really big 22, because they come out 63 or 64 grain from this. So, I actually do need those. They come out 63, 64 grain. So, you can, I can make any of the 22s that I use but there's a lot of excess and it's just like a whole bunch of crap that I have to remelt. It's just, a, it's just, to me it's senseless because all that stuff that's coming out, I have to remelt it and make more. Why not just make them a little bit different? So these could be, these could be the same depth, but like just circle. And then I could, uh, I could use it for, I could use it for just 25s and that one I'm making right now for 22s because that'll make eight at a time. And I would much rather have eight at a time of 22s because they're very time consuming to make. This thing, the day that I got it, this kit, I spilled almost this whole entire thing. As soon as I, the first time I walked back here with it, I, I was doing something and it, and it hit the door or something over here and this whole thing, I had to literally, these were each individually wrapped in like paper. This is like a little piece of the paper right here this little wax paper stuff every single one was wrapped in it and i had to take them all out and read the numbers on them and i first i started with a micrometer i was measuring every single one and then i i realized that they were labeled you can't really see it it's not very easy to see it's very tiny and i don't know if you see that it says 180 on it but anyways they're very they're very small letter numbers and very difficult to read so um so here's a 214 so actually, this is actually smaller than a 22 entrance. So I think the, that was a 214. Let's do a 213. Yeah, it's a 213. 213 at the top, at the very top. And then it gets a little bit wider right there. That's one of the ribs in the, in the slug. So 213, let me try 212. It's a little bit smaller than that. So 210. See, all of these are a little roughed up at the top from trying to, from all the slugs that I've made, trying to bang the slugs out when they're sticking in. That's why the black stuff to, to you're supposed to spray it on and spray it on when they're cold. So I sprayed that other one already, so I can I can have them. It's called knockout, I think. It actually is called knockouts because you knock the knock them out instead of you know like uh, instead of uh, having a fight with them. That's gonna be a little too big, I think. They, they knock out on their own, rather. I, I'm gonna have to go a little bit bigger because I don't have one that's the right size. They're either smaller or bigger, which is what happened to me on the other one. I have the perfect size for 22, but I just do not have the perfect, I mean for 25, rather. I do have the perfect size for 25. I do not have the perfect size for 22. I'm gonna definitely get a bit for that because there's a lot of things that I'm gonna need it for. I did have the perfect size for 22 um, when I did the the plate. I mean, the, I'm sorry, the same scratch right. I'm do I'm tightening it again. You son of a bitch. 
when I made the single shot trays for the FX and the HM1000X, the uh, the 22, you know, it's not the 22 itself. It's actually the 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 uh, the probe where the probe goes, because the probe pushes right through and pushes the slug into the middle. But you you need it to line right up, and I, I got them to line right up, and they came out good. But they um, they uh, Duke, what are you doing over there, good boy? I got them to line right up, but they were not the exact same size as it would be for for the um, the 22 itself, for like an actual hole. I mean, that's just the top, ha it's like half, you know, you're using a bullnose and just making the swipe into it for the right diameter, which the bullnose is actually more narrow at the tip when you're going straight down, it's gonna get wider. Almost only a couple of collet sizes I haven't opened yet. Those collets were all wrapped up when I got this machine. So I didn't have anything else to use them on with a spindle that's this big before this. Not with collets anyway. Uh, where's my remote? Okay. So this I just do manually and, and just find my way. I'm gonna put it down to 25. Uh, that's 25 in the jog speed and the inches per minute. So when you put the speed down, you can get a lot more precise, obviously. And you can, you can make this thing move one one thousandth of an inch at a time, which is obviously very precise. But this, I'm gonna actually go down lower right now to get it really precise. But I'm not going to go to one one thousand. That's a little too far. Sometimes when I'm going into metal, I do that. So I know right where I'm going to hit. Okay, that looks good. Let's turn it on. So now I'm going on the DRO so that all the holes are going to be the same depth. You see, you see the numbers on the right hand side, it's on the bottom in, under Z, it's 2.3555. So that's where I want to be on all, all the rest of them when I go into the hole. So once I make sure I'm in the right spot to go down, it's going to go right back down to 2.3555 rather. Actually, no, it's not. I have to go a lot deeper. So the hole already was deeper than that. So I'm going to make it deeper still. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to make the tops of them this wide. And then, no, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to make them all the way that wide. So this is going to end up being a 30 caliber now. Um, yeah, because I knew that bit was a little too big. So I messed up on that. Uh, well, that's, that is what it is. It's going to have to go down further though, because that's, that's not, the, the original one is already deeper than that. And I am going to resurface it too. So it's not even going to be as deep as it was. All right. So 2.5. 2.5025. 2.5025 is how, how deep it's going to be. And let's see, let me move it this way a little bit. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not quite all the way, but it's very close to where it was. 2.5025. It's kind of hard to tell if you're exactly where you want to be until you get right down on it. that way
went a hair deeper, but like literally five thousandths of an inch, so it's insignificant at best. Five thousandths of an inch is a big deal on a CNC machine, but not when you're doing this. It, this just that's just going to be a little bit, bit more excess coming out of the press that I wouldn't even notice if I wasn't paying attention right now. If I wasn't paying attention to exactly how deep I'm making these holes, I, I wouldn't even notice. It's that insignificant. Unless it was five short, if it was five too little, then I would notice. see it when it's, I got two more holes to do and I'll see it at that point and I want to I want to see also uh, after I resurface it how deep it's going to be and I might have to go a little deeper in each one of these because I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to need to take off to get that middle part smooth is it right? yeah, yeah. that I'm not gonna resurface it with this tiny bit because it'll take forever so I'm gonna stop this and then we'll put the speed up a little bit I'll swap that bit out um, so anyways I can resurface it on my own I'll show you guys at a later time but I can cast some real quick with this oh I forgot to respray the top of this this is the stuff I'm talking about Dro oh dropout that's what it is not knockout dropout because they're supposed to drop right out. Look at the pile it's pouring out since it got hot. It's actually, I turned it up a little hotter to melt it than I usually have to go. I mean, it's you only have to go to five, maybe six on this, the, the, of the, on the dial. It's not, it's not in like actual degrees. I'm not sure what the, what the increments are, but uh, it's numbered like one through uh, uh, zero to ten. Um, okay, so this is fluxing compound for. This gets rid of all the garbage in the in the lead. You'll see it'll it'll like bu bubble up and all that crap on the top will stick to it. Can you guys see this? Hold on. All right, there we go. You don't really need to see my ugly mug. All right. So we'll mix that in. And you got to be careful when you put this in too because it'll kind of splash. I should have gloves on, but I've done this quite a few times and I've already burnt myself pretty bad. So I'm definitely cautious enough after having burnt myself that uh, I don't do stuff that I normally would have. I mean, I still do, I should be wearing gloves anyway, but I don't know if you can even see, but my whole hand right there was burnt. This was all, I got my whole hand. The whole the the skin just like slid right off my hand like a glove. 
which actually was a good thing because it, the the hot the hot molten lead didn't stay on my hand. It just like slid, you know, it took the first couple few layers of skin right with it. Um, but it was a pretty serious burn. It took a while to heal. And actually the worst part of it was on the top and that healed the fastest. It was right here at the joint. This was the last thing to heal at the joint of my wrist. It, that one that took like a month and a half at the end, at the bottom, maybe two months. I, I mean, I don't even remember exactly, but it was a while. It was, a, it was a, one of the longer things that took to heal on me. Even when I cut my arm, my, my arm I cut with a circular saw, my, uh, my sleeve got caught in the saw and it pulled my arm right in and uh, I had f uh, 14 double mattress stitches, which that was scary as hell, but it healed quickly. I mean, I was literally here the next day and finished the job that I was doing the day before with the same damn saw. But the, uh, the experience itself was scary. I mean, I had to send one of my guys over here that night while I was in the hospital to clean up all the blood so that my tenants wouldn't think there was a fucking massacre or something. Because I was like squirting blood out of my arm. Even after, like in the same stride as, as I cut myself, I, I, it, it, I saw it. And as soon as I saw it, I dropped the saw, grabbed grab the sleeve that just got ripped, pulled it the rest of the way off. I'm saying, while I'm doing this, hey Siri, call 911. Oh shit, every time I do that, she does it. Fuck. Uh, my phone's in the other room, okay, good. Anyways, um, every time I relive that and say that, it actually calls it. Anyway, um, I tourniqueted it and tight as hell, and it was still like shooting out, shooting out like a fountain it was it was insane that was one of the more intense injuries i've had which is saying a lot because i've had a lot of injuries and that was that was me being careless well, some of them actually came out okay if you line this thing up right oh look see they did they dropped right out look at that drop out the dropouts one of them didn't come out all that good that one's not very good the rest are all good, except, no, this one ain't complete. Okay. I need to not just open it all the way, because then it pours out too quick for these little tiny holes. Let's see that. Now it's coming out good. So, you see? And there's your slugs that quick. So there's eight of them, boom, drop them out. And when they come out like this, and when, they're, when, the, when the holes are fresh like this, oh man, it's... It's nice because after you have it for a while and it gets worn down, then they don't come out that easy like that. And uh, then you're banging them out. And, you know, even after I use the dropout on the old holes like that, that's what all those marks are from on the 25 because I use that more than anything. Um, I'm not sure why I favor 25 caliber. But, well, also the 25s I can use to make 30 caliber bullets because they're 60 something grain and the 30 caliber, I do make 69 grain and they, these won't make those. But for the most part, every size, if I make a whole bunch of these and I start making 30 caliber, I can use these for that too. See, these, I don't, I'm not even tapping it and they're falling out as soon as I open it. That, that dropout stuff really does work. I mean, to, a, to an extent, when, it's, when they're all messed up, it's not, nothing's going to help you. say it's pouring out so fast that it's not getting into some of the holes sometimes anyways I don't want to bore you guys doing the whole tray of these but I'm gonna keep making them now that I liquefied it but I will cut the video short there um, but yeah just obviously when you're doing this be very careful I've literally been burned before not that's not a figure of speech I've actually been burned before and it sucks it really, it, it's a bitch to get it to heal, when, especially when you get it on a joint. Even if you're a guy that's used to getting hurt like I am, used to getting injured like I am, f like you do a, a job that, you know, f frequent injuries are not, not uh, foreign for you. This is a pain in the ass one because it's, it's a pain in the ass to get it to heal, which, you know, and it, usually it's probably going to be on your hand or your arm because that's the only part that really is exposed to it unless you're wearing gloves, which the other thing about wearing gloves while you're doing this is it kind of like
cripples you. You can't, you can't like do everything I'm doing w very well with gloves on. It's just, you just can't. Especially the big heavy ones that you're, like welding gloves, even TIG welding gloves are, are gonna make this difficult. And TIG welding gloves make TIG welding difficult. But you, you need them. TIG welding, you really do need them. But this is just so much lower temperature. I mean, it's definitely enough to burn you, obviously, but it's not like you can't put your hands near it without getting, you know, TIG welding, you get burnt even putting your hands close. Because it's like 30 something thousand degrees. The, the, uh, the, plasma, the plasma coming out of it. Once you, once you make an arc and you have a plasma coming with the, with the argon, then you, uh, you got like 30 something thousand degrees. It's some crazy heat. Uh, but anyways, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it here, guys. I'm going to drop out this last one. But as you can see, I'm getting a bunch of, uh, a bunch of chunks of lead to press into slugs. That's my little pan that I tack welded together out of a piece of sheet metal that I, I use for making slugs. But uh, anyways, I will finish up the Ed gun and I'll get that video up for you guys. And then uh, I'll probably put this one up tomorrow after I finish the second mold and make one more short segment. All right, have a good night, guys.